Hey y'all, I am back with another video um, on my planner. I had a couple of my planner friends ask me how I make my dividers um, because they were looking for an easy way to make a custom divider. And so I decided to do a video that's hopefully not as long as the last one to show how I make my dividers. Um, and if you saw my last video, you already know that um, I do have some dividers from the Kiki K planner, but I also have some that I created myself. Um, the dividers that I'm going to be replacing are two that I made some time ago. Um, I used to prefer my labels to be oops, kind of looks up, upside down, but I preferred them to sit ah, this way, and I've changed that, so I want to recreate them, so I'm going to be taking these out and making new ones. Okay, these dividers were made with um, some simple paper that I have from, I think I got it from Hobby Lobby, and I will... Let's see if I can find it here really quick. It's not cardstock. Um, obviously, you can use cardstock. That's going to probably be a more a sturdier option. But the paper that I was using is this is uh, the uh, the Paper Studio, Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby. And if you are opposed to shopping at Hobby Lobby, there's other places you can get similar paper. Obviously, Michaels, Joanne, um, and you can also probably find it on Amazon. And I'll put a link in the description to some similar this paper and some other options. This paper is very thin. It's not cardstock. I would probably say it's similar to standard um, printer paper. I'm not sure, but it feels it's pretty thin. It's just regular paper, so don't expect much from it. And so that's the reason when I decided to use this paper because I loved it so much um, that I knew that I, I needed something a little more sturdy on the back of it. And so the back side, I'm using actual cardstock here. And you can get a variety of colors. You see a lot of different colors here. And so I just match up. the cardstock or the paper with um, a complementing cardstock color. And so this one is just regular paper with a blue cardstock on the back. And this one has a dark blue cardstock that I'm going to be replacing. I kind of like this um, to have the two different colors. It's it's kind of pretty, but I'm going to be doing something different today. I got these cardstock papers in the mail from Happy Scrappy. I'll put her link below. But these are cardstock A5 size. And the reason I'm using these is because I am really bad at cutting things. So if you don't know, A5 size is, I think it's 5 0.8 by 8.3 inches um, and so that means if I'm going to use you know this large paper or I'm gonna use printer paper or anything uh, I'm gonna have to cut it and while I have a paper cutter and I've got the rulers and I've got all sorts of tools to keep my cutting straight I'm just gonna be honest and say that it just doesn't work out that way it's always too small you know it just doesn't work out well to be fair to myself, these uh, <laughs> were cut down by me, and they look pretty good, right? The size and everything, it seems to fit well, but the stress involved <laughs> was not uh, worth it to me. So if you, you know, if you want to take a shortcut, which I'm going to do, uh, maybe you would prefer using cards that are already cut down to size. And these are really cute. I wish that uh, was the opposite side or one side was a solid color. I, 
kind of like the idea of a pattern uh, with a solid color on the back side of it but these are really cute come on that's really cute and this one is a coloring sheet that I'm not gonna laminate because you know me I like to color it first these are you can actually cut these into four little squares with cute messages on the back I'm not gonna laminate that one either okay so what I am going to do is laminate this black and white cactus card so once you have your paper either cut down to size or you've purchased the size that you need um, already ready for you then the next step is to add a tab and as I said in my previous video um, oh another I, I forgot to mention this another positive of buying cardstock or using cardstock and already having it designed is that I don't have to put anything together when I use those two separate sheets the pattern paper and then the cardstock on the back I have to not only cut them down to size but I have to make sure they are perfectly together before I laminate them if there's any kind of slip or sliding it's gonna look a little bit off with this I don't have to make sure anything's together I can just laminate this one card all right so I'm gonna add a label I was thinking about adding a black label and writing with white but I don't think I'm gonna do that um, let's see what colors on the other side here you've got green I think I'm gonna go with the green So I mentioned in a previous video that these tabs are a nightmare to get off, which means it's going to be really easy right now. Yeah, of course. So you just determine where you want to put your tab. I'm going to take a look in my planner and see where my other tabs are so that I can make sure. Let's see. Since I'm going to be replacing this one, I'm going to put it in a similar area. So you just want the top of the tab to kind of match up with the top of the paper. I'm trying to do this on camera and I'm standing, so it's probably crooked and not going to turn out exactly like I want. But this will give you a general idea. And then you use an, oop, another tab and you put it on the opposite side and you have to try to match it up oops again I'm doing this on camera for the first time so this is probably not lining up like I'd like it to okay once you have your tab on there it looks good yeah okay then you can write it's a little crooked but then you can use whatever pen or marker or design you want to write in your label. And I'm going to find a pen. This is going to be really sloppy. Once you write it in, you can write it on the front and the back. It just depends on what you prefer. I generally don't label the backs, but that's up to you. Again, these are the labels and I'll put the link below to get those. Now it's time to laminate. Laminating is easy. This is the laminator that I use. It's a scotch laminator. I think I got it from Walmart a couple years ago. And it was uh, like $19. You can also find them on Amazon, of course. Yeah, we're a homeschooling family, so we've, we've always just had to keep an, a laminator. So if you don't have one, again, I'll have the link below. And these are really cheap, and they work pretty well. It does take a little while to heat up. So once it's heated up, I'll be back. Okay, the laminator is ready to go. Uh, this 
laminated, or like I said, it's fairly easy. You just turn it on and put the paper in, and you're already. Well, actually, I oh, forgot a step. You have to use the pouches here. Um, these are, ooh, I can't remember how much they cost, but they're thermal laminating pouches, and you just put your item that you're, oops, that you're laminating inside. Then you put it into the laminator, and you're good to go. You just open it up on one end. I got a lot of noises going here. Outside, they're doing the yard. My fan's going, the laminator's going. Okay. Now, once you've got it lam or into the pouch, you put the closed end first, which is very important so that your laminator doesn't get jammed. And we just stick it. Right. Of course, let me just check here. Oops. Inside. There we go. Was still closed up a little bit and it will just feed automatically through and come out all pretty on the other side the hard part for me is getting those labels straight the, the tab straight and cutting the first time I used the laminator I cut so close to the paper that it actually broke the seal which wasn't good and there it is all laminated okay now we'll just turn that off and move it out of the way they recommend waiting a few minutes for the lamination to cool down a little bit. Now, most people will get out their paper cutter and cut. And sometimes I do. Well, let's see. It doesn't always go well for me. So, uh, I can try here. I don't have my glasses. Now cutting around the tab, you're going to have to use scissors, or at least I don't know of an easy way to cut around the tab. So I usually just cut off um, oops, the large portions of plastic and then come back closer with some scissors come in closer with some scissors Get some of this junk out of the way. okay so we're closer we're, we're getting there right then I got grab some scissors these are my really old scissors and cut away best way I know how I'm sure there are better methods and if anyone knows of any please feel free to leave a comment below and I think I'm getting too close so. hmm. Sometimes if I'm feeling a little fancy, I will uh, cut around the corners up a little bit and I just use a little corner rounder. This is what I have. 
I don't know if I linked in my other video, but this is what I like to use. And it's got options to make large, medium, and small rounded corners. And you just stick it in and clip. That didn't work. Wait, I want, I want medium here. And it just rounds them off a bit. Okay. The last step before we put it into the planner is to give it some holes. And I mentioned this in my previous video. This is my little baby. That's always leaking uh, paper from inside of it. I probably need to empty it out. Uh, when I'm cutting my paper, I have to measure it because if I don't measure it, I will get holes everywhere. Meaning, if I just stick my paper in and I say, well, I think that's about where the holes go. And then I take the next sheet and I say, oh, I think that's about where the holes go. When I actually put them together, they're not really lined up, if you can see there. And that tends to happen because there's there's just really no way to, um, I guess, measure here. There's no, there's no end to put the paper into. There's no stopper. So what I usually do is um, I measure it. And this is slightly off topic a little bit, but I will measure my paper and I'll just do the other side. Um, and then get, and then mark the halfway point. Paper down, measure. I think it's a, about eight and a quarter. Then I'll take a pencil and I'll mark it at the halfway point, which is about four and one eighth. And I always mark my paper, just like that. And if you notice on the hole puncher, there's a little line that indicates the middle. I just match up the line on my paper with the line on um, the paper cutter. And I always get about the same location when I'm punching. And then I just erase the line. I, I do that every time when I'm cutting my paper. Again, maybe there's a better way, but that uh, ensures that my papers aren't all, don't have holes all over the place. And you can see the actual middle is way different from what I punched on this side. When it comes to my dividers, I'm a, I don't really tend to measure, because you can't really write on it. I kind of eyeball it. To make sure it's the middle. I don't care as much with my tabs as I do with my paper. Punch. Let's hope it went through. It did. Got the holes there and this baby is ready to go into its new home. There we go. I'm gonna miss this one. <laughs> I really love it, uh, but it's time for a change. And that's the beauty of using a binder planner. You can change your colors, your paper, your dividers, change your style. You can, you know, if it's Christmas time, you can have Christmas. Um, tab dividers you can you can really dress it up and have it match how you're feeling um, that week or that month so there you have it that's how you create a divider for your a5 binder planner if you have any questions just find me on social media or leave a comment below and I will definitely definitely respond thank you see you guys later